It's the best reason to get up on a Monday. It's Roll to Roll. I'm Benj. I'm Chase. I'm Dave. Uh, this week, we're going to quickly talk about builds and what a build actually is. Because different races and classes lend themselves to emphasizing one set over another. So, uh, Dave, walk me through ability scores and what they're for. We talked about a little bit with skills last week, or two weeks ago, I guess it was. What's my strength for? What's my constitution for? All right, uh, so in simple terms, not getting into, like, the deep game mechanics, uh, strength is going to be how hard you hit something and how easily you hit something in melee. Um, it's also to do with, you know, carrying capacity, things like that. But those deal less with a build. Uh, your constitution is going to deal with your hit points, how hard you are to kill. Every class could use them, because every class could use more don't get killed. Dexterity feeds into your armor class, how hard you are to get hit. It also adds to your uh, damage and attack to hit with any kind of ranged weapons. And also with finesse weapons, which is a thing that you know rogues and rangers are going to look at quite a bit, because they're suited for that. Um, looking at the mental stats... Your intelligence is going to be for your uh, wizards. It's their prime ability score. It's what all their spell attack bonuses and their spell save DC is based off of. Wisdom is going to be for your clerics and your druids. And then charisma is going to be for your bards, your sorcerers, and your warlocks. Um, and again, those those three ability scores are going to tie into their spell attack bonus and their spell save DC. Don't forget rangers and paladins. Well, yeah, rangers, rangers and paladins. Rangers use wisdom and paladins use charisma, I believe. Uh, so, yep. sorry about that. You got it. No, you're good. Um, so, fifth edition really, really feels like it favors uh, the dexterity build. Uh, pretty much every class, with the exception of maybe two or three, looks at having a high dexterity score because you can use that for attacks with, like Dave said, finesse weapons, with ranged weapons. You use it for your armor class to avoid getting hit and taking damage. Um, and now that they've said that your hands are a finesse weapon, you can make a monk without a strength score at all, which is crazy right. to me because it used to be that like the monks needed everything except maybe their charisma. Like you didn't have to be polite to be a monk; you just take a vow of silence, I guess. Yep. And also, your dexterity is your deck saving throw, which a lot of spells target because it's similar to the old reflex saving. Right. Just get out of the way of the fireball or the pit trap. With a needle trap. Or the falling block trap. Yeah. Rolling ball, Indiana Jones trap. Moving on. <laughs> Absolutely. So when I look at this, I'm a big, big fan of the strength build because I'm old. And I like my old school fighters to be really, really strong. But as you look at it, you can get away with a dex build for pretty much every class. Uh, you could even get away with a dex build barbarian. You wouldn't do as much damage as a strength build barbarian, but you would last longer because your armor would be higher. Uh, you could do a dex build fighter uh, and do you know a rapier or a longbow as your primary weapon. But here's here's where I would argue that that's a terrible idea. Fighters, paladins, and half of your clerics are proficient with heavy armor. Heavy armor doesn't use your dexterity at all and requires a higher strength for you to be able to wear it because it's heavy. Thus, heavy armor. Beyond that, sure, dex build everything else. But for a, a fighter, a paladin, and half of your clerics, I would argue do a strength build because your dexterity isn't going to do you as much good and heavy armor is better than medium armor or light armor. I was thinking about this the other day. For those of you who also play uh, video games out there in the virtual space, the first Mass Effect game, there were six classes. The only one that could use assault rifles was soldiers. So it told me, those are the best guns. Because only the gun guy can use them. So again, heavy armor is probably the best armor. Because only fighters and paladins and half your clerics can use it. Nobody else can. And you could do a dex build fighter. I don't think a dex build paladin feels good, but that's because of my classic classic view of what a paladin is. And uh, 
yeah, your your heavy armor clerics, same thing. They're going to be out there, but statistically and numerically, heavy armor is going to give you a better bonus than medium armor, unless you take the medium armor master feat, which is going to take a feat, and then you're also going to be required to have a dex modifier of at least plus three, and that would get you on the same level as heavy armor, and that feels like a lot of things to do when I could just wear heavy armor instead. Uh, beyond that, I also wanted to talk about equipment selection and maybe talk about magic items a little bit, and that's when I'll drag Chase in kicking and screaming since he's the guy who normally distributes our magic items. Um, <laughs> and uh, Dave, I'm going to get you that spreadsheet, and I'm probably mm -hmm. going to write up uh, an explanation of the spreadsheet uh, for folks to find on the website so they can see sounds good because I did the math on damage for uh, different die types and different weapons uh, so that would that would help out the folks doing their building of their characters decide whether they wanted to use on a on a barbarian that's using a two-handed great weapon if they wanted to use a great axe a great sword or a maul um, so uh, look forward to that on the website folks um, Chase, talk to me about magic items. Ah, hello, hello. Oh, God, you're dragging me over here. Ah. Okay. Yeah, you dragged really hard. You're dragging me. <laughs> um, magic items are your, well, especially in 5th edition, are your way to where you can almost turn, well, I don't want to put it down this narrow avenue, but it is one way of the ability of turning any class into almost any build and all I'm trying to say with that is magic items are a way of breaking preconceived builds because a uh, what's a good squishy class a uh, nerdy wizard could grab some gauntlets of ogre power over strength I'm pretty sure it's gauntlets of ogre strength and all of a sudden they have a strength of 19 like they, they, they suddenly work out real hard. <laughs> um, and then the reverse is equally true. You could have a fighter that has like an intelligence score of 8, and all of a sudden they get a headband of intellect, and now they have an intelligence of 19. And, you know, our genius is essentially in 5E standards of what that 19 score actually means. Um, so in that way, magic items kind of alter the rules for builds because they can kind of help you work around some stuff um they also i mean of course there's <laughs> there's hundreds of magic items out there and i actually think that number is about accurate i'm pretty sure the dmg has well into the hundreds but uh um, there's also custom made magic items which is where dms can go crazy if they really want to i won't go into that too much i'll do a uh some fun dm non-player videos later but uh That'll just be my little grain of salt about magic items, is just they can make it to where anyone can kind of do anything, depending on how your DM passes them out. Because I know in my campaigns, as both of these guys can vouch for, I don't really build my loot off what the party wants. I build my loot tables off of what would actually be where they're at. So if they're you know, raiding a thieves' guild, they're probably not going to find, you know... A dwarven thrower and gauntlets of ogre strength and stuff like that. You probably will find more sneaky stuff. Um, but you know, again, DM discretion on magic items, and that's like that's as far as I'll go down that avenue for now. Because <laughs> that could that could be a very long video to itself. So I'm still yes. I'm still waiting on my gauntlets of ogre power for my bard. That's why I kept using them as a. Uh, yeah. That's why I kept using well, those and, as an example. And it's interesting that we bring those up because they did change how those work in 5th edition. Uh, it used to be that there was a, a piece of equipment for every stat, and now they've cut it down to strength, uh, intelligence, and I think wisdom, but I'm not wisdom, 100% Wisdom, yeah, because you have, you have the, uh, it's something of the owl or owl something that uh, boosts your wisdom score to 19. Okay. Yeah, and, and then there's also the, the Belt of Giant Strength that is better than Gauntlets of Overpower. Well, depending um, on which giant you get. That's one, those higher. Magic, yeah, that's one of those I magic... I checked, they were, they were all greater than or equal to, so... Okay, there you go. But yeah, that's one of those, for, for everyone out there on the internet, uh, that's one of those items where the strength of the belt is based off what giant it comes from. So like a, heel giant, uh, a belt of Hill Giant Strength would be weaker than a belt of Storm Giant Strength. 
Yeah, yeah. Right. Pretty, pretty cool little magic item. Which we should give to the Goliath if we find, but I, dibs on the gauntlets. I'm uh, saying. Um, go crazy. Because his strength is already that high. Like, his strength is already up there. He doesn't need it. It wouldn't help him. Yeah. <laughs> and again, by the uh, way, guys, that, just so this ever makes sense to you guys, if you guys ever do want campaign diaries so some of our random side notes make more sense, just let me know, and if I can get the free time, I promise I will record as much as I can so you guys actually know about what this random campaign we keep randomly talking about is all about. Well, it's just a, it's, it's really just a current event for me. You know, it's what we happen to be doing at the time. I could tell stories about previous campaigns, but they're not fresh in my brain right now. Um, anyway, uh, just some quick, some quick, uh, build advice. Uh, Ranger with medium armor master. Fantastic. Highly recommend Ranger with medium armor master, uh, dex build because they're proficient with medium armor. It'll do better than them using light armor and having a maximized uh, dexterity because there is a hard cap. Um, none of your stats can get above 20 in this edition, which means that your maximum uh, bonus is plus 5. And your light armor's maximum armor bonus is 2. So you can get a 17 out of light armor, but with medium armor your maximum turns into like 18, which is your base with uh, heavy armor. So that's that's one recommendation. Again, fighter, heavy armor, all day, every day. Barbarian, no armor, all day, every day. Although, they do have proficiency with medium armor, so if you wanted to, if you could find some half plate, you could do that, but you would hit a dex cap, which I guess is fine if you don't do a dex build barbarian, and why would you? I say that because my next character is planning to be a dex build barbarian. Just try it out. It's going to be a terrible idea. It's not going to work. Um, beyond that, you know, your wizard's got to be, you know, no armor. Uh, I also wanted to talk about uh, priority of stats when you're building your character. That was kind of one of the, the, the main things I wanted to talk about. Um, fighter and paladin, you want your main stat to be strength because that's where your damage is coming from. Ranger, you probably want your top stat to be dexterity. Monk, now that your your hands are finesse weapons and you, you can aim at the squishy bits when you're punching people, probably want to do uh, dexterity as a maximum. Wizards are the only class that care about intelligence with the notable exceptions of the Eldritch Knight and the Trickster, Arcane Trickster Rogue. Yep, Arcane Trickster, but, you got it. You would want those to be, you would want your intelligence to maybe be your secondary or maybe even tertiary stat uh, for those guys. Uh, clerics and druids, obviously you want your wisdom to be your highest stat. And then either your dexterity or constitution, depending on what kind of what kind of direction you want to go with them. Warlocks, sorcerers, and bards, obviously high charisma stat. Then probably dexterity and then constitution. Uh, who did I miss? Did I miss anybody? Feeling pretty good about it. Oh, about it. one thing I could say real quick is with uh, with druids, it, it's going a little more in detail than we need to, but because if you're going to go wild shaped druid, you don't need to worry as much about your physical stats because you're wild shaped and those won't matter anymore. So that's true. So I throw true. that in there for spoiler alerts when we get to druids. There's things we can talk about <laughs> involving that, but yeah. I don't know. I, I One thing I'm really upset about 5th edition is that intelligence seems to be the dump stat. Yep. Only only wizards... It really is. Arcane tricksters and eldritch knights care about their intelligence scores. Uh, a rogue might well, care your about intelligence are still as like a some secondary or tertiary score because yeah. of their their skills, their, the investigation, investigation and whatnot. But for the yeah. most part, like intelligence is a dump stat, which means all these yep. adventuring parties are going around with the dumb. Well, like, that's that's part of what happened after they decouple it from the skill system because you don't get skill points anymore. So and you used to want intelligence because you wanted more skill points, but it doesn't work that and way. And languages anymore. and whatever, I, yeah. I, yeah, I have yeah. noticed that as well. And the only workaround I have for it in my own campaigns, obviously, 
you, you know, any DM out there can do whatever you want. But one workaround I have for that to make intelligence semi more important is to make it uh, to where um, any caster who's trying to like study magic, even though it's an arcane thing, make them use intelligence for it. Like, can your mind like physically, I guess mentally and physically, withstand trying to learn this archaic knowledge? Um, is one way I've seen it implemented, especially in um, uh, Lovecraftian style pre-made campaigns because they're all about how how well can your brain deal and then your int stat can become rather important. But the, the downside of that is much time of those campaigns, they uh, use the alternative sanity stat. So, you know, you try. The good DM giveth and the good DM taketh away. Yeah, I don't like I don't like the whole sanity and honor additional stat things. I would prefer to, to stick that with your intelligence and maybe your alignment. Uh, not that I would encourage anyone to go into like a karma point system for alignment because that's just another thing to have to track and keep up with, but I, I don't like the sanity and I don't like the, uh, the honor. Uh, alternative optional stats that you can throw in there. Again, it's just it's just another thing that I have to like spread points around into, and then you have to decide if you're doing point by how how many more points, what what stats do you want, what what bonus do you want them to have from it? Do you want them to have another couple of plus twos or another couple of plus ones or or one of each, or do you want to throw a plus three out there? Which no, you don't. Stop it. And then that's just another thing for builds. Is if you have those two things in two, right? Then you got to add in whether you want to do an honor build or a sanity build. And honestly, looking through the DMG, the bad effects of insanity aren't that bad. As as bad as that is to say, like unless you've completely lost your sanity, you're pretty much all right. Like a spurt of ten minutes of insanity, whoop de do. You know. Yeah. Well, the not... the only other thing about that, I they they don't have classes that are proficient in sanity saves. Yeah. So there's no way to get your proficiency bonus on those, and it does it just it doesn't make sense to me. It feels like something they just threw in at the end, and didn't really play test because it's an optional thing that you can do maybe if you want to, but now I've got to take my level up points and maybe put them into my sanity or my honor instead of putting them into my main points that my character class is designed to be built around, or picking a feat. And there aren't any feats that go with. I guess you could take resilient and yeah, put a point. You take resilient to give you put a point into sanity and ha, and be proficient at sanity saving throws. That would be the only way to do it. And that feels like I'm just giving up a feat because uh, I'm using an optional rule for this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like it. Chase, did uh, didn't we? use the optional sanity rules in, like, the first test campaign we did in 5e. I vaguely remember doing them as an optional thing, but they only came up, like, once. Are you referring to the one I ran or the one we played in? The one we played in, unless it was the one we you ran. I just remember we did it in one of the tests, the test things I, we did when 5e so was new. So, for 5th edition, I have ran sanity twice. Um, once was, I want to say, in the Ravenloft campaign we ran... Uh, yeah, I didn't do that because Ravenloft is terrible. Yeah, binge was there. Yeah, that is that sure is correct. We did DM. we did have sanity yep. in in that in that game, and we didn't really see how it went because we only played like two or three sessions of it. Yeah, so I I, so yeah, I can't speak for it that much. And then in the campaign I initially ran, where I was trying out uh, DMing for one of the first times, the fifth edition, uh, I had the sanity stat because I was that was the dual worlds campaign. Where, oh, okay, where right, right. your characters were literally you guys' body or your soul or whatever transferred to an NPC body that you guys now controlled. So, and your characters were dealing with the insanity of a tech world and a yeah. And again, it did. I couldn't use that system to make it work how I wanted to work. Like, there's much better ways. Now, again, wizards, don't come hunt me down if you ever hear this. But I, I, I had much better ways of dealing with insanity without using the one out of the book. Um, that was much more realistic to how insanity would work. Well, you know, just, the book says these are optional fits. rules you can use, and the DM has the option to use those rules or come up with their own rules. So yeah. Wizards is fine with that. They've already got you covered. It's in print, and they can't come back and, and renege on it because it's in print. Yeah. It's totally okay. So, but anyway, 
that that's going off into a whole subject of a bill that will probably come up very little. So I wouldn't worry about too much internet. In fact, we'll probably never speak of it again. Yeah. I mean, granted, if you guys want to hear more about it, let us know. We can make a video just on insanity and do some reading, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but well, otherwise, alert. Yeah, we don't, don't like it. Too much. <laughs> 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 At least not as written. It can be. It can be very fun in other ways to deal with a character's mental issues, but. With what's in the book, it's just literally you freak out for 10 minutes, and then you're like, okay, I'm good. Sorry, guys. I'm better. Walk it off. Walk it off. Yeah, walk it off. Unless you get the forever one, but, you know, whatever. Right. I think that's all I've got. Uh, Chase, closing thoughts? Um, The only thing I'll say is uh, just because this video is about builds, um, and I'm just me being the kind of person I am, don't ever feel like you have to play a class a certain way. Obviously, you can play any class however you want. This video is just to give you an idea of what you know each class can be very good at. If you want to be a stat numbers guy, but you know if you want to make a barbarian who has his dump stat being strength and dexterity and everything else physical, go for it. Have fun with it. Do do you what you want. You can actually, like. because golems of ogre power exist, you can legit be a barbarian with a dump stat of strength, as <laughs> long as you can find golems of ogre power very very quickly. And again, I'm only talking about the numbers because I'm the numbers guy. I'm the game mechanics guy, and that, honestly, that's that's the reason I play is because I like the numbers. Uh, Dave, I'll tag off what uh, Chase said. Um, third edition was really big on character builds. You know, you get your character and you plan them out, and uh, you look at all because the, there's so many feats, and you can't just do it spur of the moment because you have to look at every feat and figure out which one was optimized. Or you didn't have to, but if you didn't, it felt like you were playing a subpar character and the game would be harder or not as fun. And 5th edition has thankfully gotten rid of some of that mentality, which I personally like because I'm not big on builds. I kind of like playing the character a little bit by the seat of my pants and just kind of doing what I think they would do as far as not just role-playing, but also in leveling them up and taking feats or whatever. Um, we talked about the feat system last episode. Or episode before last, last uh, episode or two ago, last episode. and uh, yep, I mentioned that uh, you know they they made feats an optional system in the game, which is great because it can be a lot of fun, but it can also be at least in third edition a lot of pressure. And again, they took a lot of that pressure off of you. Um, like Chase said, character builds, building your character can be a lot of fun, but if you want to play um, uh, a character that's uh, I don't want to say non-optimized, but like that's uh, subpar, you can say it. Subpar. Su not su not even subpar. Like if you want to play a character that's playing like off archetype, I'll go with that. There we go. That's the off, archetype. off archetype. Off archetype. Yeah. Like, feel free. Do whatever makes you happy. Like if you if you want to throw down that barbarian who who's got a lot of charisma and intelligence, but can't hit anything. If you're having fun, man, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> My name is Sir Walter the Barbarian, and I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> I actually Go saw that in a webcomic, and, uh, it didn't work out well for anybody who wasn't him. Uh, and alright, that's, that's the Builds episode. Uh, where can they find us, Dave? Uh, where can they find us, Dave? Uh, you guys can find us on the YouTube channel you're currently on. And also at rolltorollblog.wordpress.com and, and facebookcom slash roll to roll. We're also on SoundCloud, which you may be listening to us on, etc. What he said. <laughs> All right. As the roll to roll fairy saying, we're also on SoundCloud. Ah, uh, I put the fairy in a bottle. Don't worry, I won't eat it. You'll get all your hearts back. It'll be great. All right, guys. That's the Bills episode. I'm Benj. I'm Chase. I'm Chase. I'm Dave. Keep, keep on rolling. <laughs> <laughs>